Hello, everybody. My name is Colton with Narrative Inc., and I'm here with another in author interview. Today, I have a very special guest. Would you like to introduce yourself? Yep. I'm David Hankins. I'm the author of Death and the Taxman, which is about the Grim Reaper trapped in an IRS agent's dying body, and he has to regain his powers before he dies and faces judgment for his original sin. Uh, I've been writing for about six years. I've been really serious at it for two to three now. And uh, this is my first novel, but I've won uh, a short story contest that you may have heard of called Writers of the Future, uh, which the short story Death and the Tax Man is what grew into the novel. And so, yeah, here to talk about writing and short stories and novels and Kickstarters or whatever else you want to talk about. There you go. Yeah, I uh, so I actually I saw you at the Life, the Universe, and Everything conference, and I was like, "Who is that guy with a fedora? He's just so like <laughs> you're kind of tall, and recognizable." I was like, "I need to I need to meet that guy." And then I saw that yeah, you're a winner of the uh, Writers and Illustrators of the Future, and I'm like, "Wow, that's really impressive." So I'm I'm really excited well, thank to you. have you on. I'm really happy you're here, guys. Check out his book. I've started reading it. Chapter one hits so hard. If you've heard the rules start as close to the end as possible, this is the the book to go for. Plus, it's funny. Uh, if you like, his pitch is obviously pretty funny. So, check it out. I have a special pre-release copy, uh, so I'm I'm very very excited about that. But yeah, so yeah, you've been a, lot, a part of a lot of your interviews. Really excited to be added to that catalog because um, I think. I don't. I think not enough authors actually get on and express themselves, no matter how big the podcast is, because it, mm -hmm. it helps you practice with your books and everything. Um, but yeah, one of my first questions is: out of the past six years that you've started writing, you've actually accomplished a lot. Not only winning competitions, but you've you're a published author now, or about to be officially published. Um, so, what advice? Well, I, do you I am oh. officially published. Oh, I have oh, is a, it? A, quite a few short oh, stories. Okay that are out uh, oh, so this gotcha. is my first novel but right. yeah i've got quite a few pro and semi-pro uh short story publications okay right and of course you've been in the writers of the future silly silly right. mistake but you're right but you've accomplished a lot in just that six or seven year amount of time mm -hmm. that you've been writing what advice do you have to anybody who's trying to break in and really get started with being a published or just even just an author i I would say learn your craft um, because that was the first thing that was holding me back. Mm. I started out I, I started out in the oral tradition of telling my daughter stories to try to get her to go to sleep at night and that you know the inventive stories were great, but they kept her from going to sleep. But it all grew into two and a half novels that I thought were amazing. And I started sending them out to agents and the agents didn't even respond. And so I got a little bit disappointed, as you know, you'll do. And uh, I switched over to short stories and found Writers of the Future, found their online workshop, which is free, self-paced. If anyone is wanting to learn anything about craft of writing, take that workshop. Um, and as I was taking that, I started to go, oh, there's a lot I'm missing. So, yeah, that was kind of my first introduction to learning the craft of writing. I knew how to, you know, string a story together or string words together in paragraphs. But um, the the deeper details of the hitting your plot points and, you know, your try fail cycles and stuff like that and how to have rising tension and all that stuff. I, I was just pulling stuff from my experience as a reader, uh, which wasn't quite enough. So. I would say learn your craft, um, especially if you want to get published by another editor, we be that short stories or long form, uh, they're not going to accept something that isn't highly polished. And then uh, on the flip side, don't quit. No matter what, don't quit because yeah. perseverance is probably the one, th uh, the biggest indicator of success in this industry because uh, there you hear no a lot uh and perseverance is key yeah dang that's amazing that's 
there's a lot but i i really love what you said especially about the uh the writing classes or the program with writers mm-hmm. of the future it's free there are so many amazing resources see bef- before i even got to life the universe and everything i never even heard of them and then once i started looking to them i'm like oh wow this is this is a huge thing yeah and the fact mm-hmm. that they just give you these resources is amazing for free especially yeah. and so i think that's that's just fantastic but perseverance uh perseverance yep we fail a lot as creatives whether it's our own personal stuff or being rejected but yeah that's no that's that's awesome uh no i love that and that kind of feeds into what i've kind of gathered of you having a philosophy of a brighter future and fun oh, very and good writing good things so how did you develop that philosophy especially with like the humor in your book and also just things i've heard you talk about on other podcasts right so i i write lighthearted stories because that's what i like to read yeah um i do read you know, some you know hard action sci-fi stuff like that you know i really like like david weber books um but I really like things that make me laugh. And I, as I was getting into writing, learning my craft, uh, one of the pieces of advice that I got from my mentor, Wolf Moon, was make the editor cry. I'm like, okay, I need something heart-wrenching and tear-jerking. And I kept trying it. I had a couple that were, yeah, okay, but just not quite getting there. And then as I was writing the short story, Death and the Tax Man, I just went, screw this. It's not, it's not working. I can't make it sad. So I'm going to go for ridiculous. And I'm just, I make them, make the editor laugh. And that worked for me. That became my voice. Uh, that's when I realized that that's what I'm good at is writing the humor uh, stories. And 99% of what I've published has been humorous. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it was kind of a, a bunch of tri-fail cycles for me, uh, trying to figure out what my voice was uh, until I found that. And yeah, I am an optimist by nature. I am always looking at the the positive side of things. I'm wildly overconfident in how well I'm going to do it, whatever it is I'm doing. Uh, like when I found Writers of the Future, I was you know all sad because my books weren't going anywhere. I was like, I'm going to find a writing contest. I'm going to write a short story and I'm going to win that contest. I mean, talk about hubris, but, and it took me a year and a half. uh, And so I was hearing, no, I I got the, Hey, you did great. You got an honorable mention. Please try again next quarter. Um, And so, yeah, just that uh, positive outlook on life is kind of how I do everything. Yeah. Well, that's amazing. I mean, well, first of all, getting an honorable mention is still a big deal. Like that, that's something that a lot of people never see when they're submitting. But I mean, it's like you said before, perseverance, just keep going. Yep. Don't give Absolutely. up. Absolutely. Oh, man, that's awesome. I, I actually have a question based on your hat. And I, uh, okay. I've i tried to like start my own writer persona. Like this jacket is basically like mm-hmm. when people see yep. me, they'll, they'll remember that jacket. Your hat, how did you come up with like, yeah, I'm going to wear a fedora. This is going to be part of me as an author. It's in your author photo. You know, um, it actually started a friend of mine, her husband, every now and then when they're, they have pictures on Facebook, he'd have a fedora on. And I was, I was like, how is it? I like that look, you know, and I, you know, see those pictures and be like, man, I wish I looked as cool as that guy. And one day I was at the shoe store and they had a fedora for sale. I was like, I'm buying myself a fedora. Brought it home and my, my wife kind of rolled her eyes at me. I was like, hey, that's fun. You know, I'd yeah. wear it on vacation or whatever. And um, then as I uh, was starting to figure out what my author persona was, I was like, you know what? I'm I'm the guy, the lighthearted guy. So I do the fedora and, uh, you know, other people will wear the, the suit and tie or a, a suit jacket or something like that. I'm like, that's not me. Yeah. So yeah, I, I kind of fell into it as I realized that that's something I enjoy. And so I have uh, my work persona, my day job, which doesn't have the fedora, and then my non-work persona, which, yeah. yeah. 
Well, I mean, you even wore it at your when you went to the the award ceremony for uh, oh yeah for it. Yep. And I was like, look at the pictures, like wow, he he's I, really going in for it. I actually have quite a few fedoras at this point. Okay. I realized this week that I may have a an impulse control problem when it comes <laughs> to buying fedoras. Um, I picked up this one at. Uh, Wow. <laughs> At the store the other day, you know, for St. Patty's Day, I was like, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll buy a $10 fedora that's brilliant green. Why not? And I got home and went, I might have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm Okay. Well, how many, four do- how many fedoras do you have? Uh, let's see. I think at this point I'm at, I think that's number eight. Okay. Okay. Well, at least it's not like 20. Um... No, but I've only been buying them for about two and a half years so. okay so yeah maybe you have a problem what you should do is every time you finish a book then you buy another one this is like this is my death and attachment sequel fedora and then when there you're signing you stuff there, there you go see so, yeah, mm. I'll, I'll, I'll be your marketing guru i'll i'll, I'll make <laughs> i'll be your stylist i'll make sure that you Love look it. good the right fedora at every event yeah sounds good sounds good okay my next question is you and you mentioned wolf moon and you've mm-hmm. you've talked about how his mentorship was just a huge piece of your success. What did he do that was different from just like writing advice online or just like your perseverance mentality? Uh, so a little bit about Wolf Moon. Mm-hmm. He is, he worked for I think it was 20, 25 years trying to win Riders of the Future. Right. And so he took the long road. He was figuring out all of this stuff on his own. I mean, he had writing mentors. He, uh, like Dave Farland, Wolverton, and um, Dean Wesley Smith, who were giving him advice as he was uh, progressing. But he was, it took him a long time learning a lot of lessons the hard way. And when he won, he said, I've learned all these lessons. I want to, you know, flip it and help those who are behind me Mm -hmm. as others helped me. And so he took that 25 years of experience and started writing what he calls the super secrets of writing, right. which is absolutely tongue in cheek because they're not secret. They are the simplest things, but the way he writes them is so um, clear mm. and understandable. Uh, and so I'd read it and light bulbs would go off. Like, oh, yeah, that, that totally makes sense. Yeah, let me do that. And he, he'd have writing exercises where you could practice whatever the thing was, you know, mm-hmm. writing smart dialogue or, right. um, you know, crazy titles. I, I have one story that just published actually an LTUE oh. anthology uh, called Milo Piper's Breakout Single That Ended the Rat War. And that was part of yeah. one of his crazy title <laughs> exercises. Uh, and it, it worked. Yeah. So, um, yeah, just... All of that, his, as he put the super secrets together, I was reading through and I went, you know, the light bulbs went off. This all makes sense. And that, I think, studying that like a law student would study for the LSATs, right. that's what helped me progress uh, more quickly than other people. Okay. Wow. And it, I didn't have to take the 25 years that he did. That's true. Yeah. Instead, you just, you know, I mean, your, your career's been a little while, but yeah, dang. Well, that's... That's really good to know. I mean, and a lot of people, I don't think, like we said earlier, they realize how many great pieces of writing advice are out there for free, or you just have to right. look a little bit. Is there so a, the, oh, yeah. Oh, I was going to say, so yes, uh, I found him on the Writers of the Future forum, uh, and that's where the thread, it all started right. with the uh, Super Secrets, but he just came out with, his book, How to Write a Howling Good oh. Story, uh, which has been a bestseller for the last four months. Wow. Um, I think it actually qualifies as runaway bestseller now. So all the super secrets, he it, before it was, it was rambling on a thread on a forum. So you had to really dig through to find the gold, um, which I did. I read every single post on that forum. Um, but now it's in a really easy to read format that yeah is absolutely fantastic so to anyone who is looking for that writing advice they're wanting to up their uh writing game i highly recommend it it's on amazon and wherever else books are sold 
yeah it will definitely link down below uh because yeah that's finding good advice is is nice i i like the name uh super secrets uh because it, <laughs> it's funny and like it, is there a a super secret piece of writing advice that you think is like a good place to start for new writers or writers who just can't seem to to get it um you know there's one that he did an article on uh, in dreamforge magazine okay uh, called uh, heart's desire yeah. and so it's it's about finding the heart's desire for your protagonist and that is what they are hunting for that's really what the story is about it's not necessarily about your plot arc of i need to get from point a to point b to save the princess it's you know the that internal arc and so i think that's really the the core of a lot of what he talks about is that heart's desire and then everything builds off of that uh and so that's an article that's uh free to read online it's also here in the howling good story and i think that's a, a good place to start and if someone reads that and goes hey this guy might be onto something yeah pick up the book yeah awesome no that i think that's perfect so you always have a love of short stories i'm also I do. A, a big fan of short stories what about short stories appeals to you how did you why did you go from like writing novels to writing short stories other than the contests of course right um i got i got hooked into short stories because i i needed something to practice more quickly mm -hmm. so if you are practicing with novels it takes a long time to write 50 to 100,000 words yeah. as you're trying to figure out voice and character arcs and all that but if you do it in a short story you can do more rotations more quickly yeah. as you are uh, practicing. So I have a story that I was practicing how to write in a noir voice. Mm. I was writing it for an anthology call, did not get picked up for the call, but I had a chance to you know, practice that type of voice, that type of setting um, in about five to 7,000 words. And then I moved on to the next thing I was working on. Uh, and so, the short stories give you the opportunity to learn and practice and grow more quickly, in my opinion, than doing novels. Okay. Yeah, I I, I think that's so awesome. Whether it's flash fiction or, you know, thousands mm -hmm. of words, I, I do think it's, you have to condense so much. You have to cut out yeah. all the fluff and just go for it. And I think that's, it's pretty hard to learn how to do that. It is. Yeah. Uh, and boy, this is starting to sound like an advertisement for Wolf Moon. <laughs> uh, so one of the things that he has taught is the kill your darlings exercise, which I won't go into uh, in detail because he's got a whole master class he does on that. But it's a lot of it is about getting rid of the fluff. You'll kill your darlings and get to the heart of the story. Right. My very first publication was a flash fiction piece called A Properly Spiced Gingerbread that came from one of those kyd exercises where it um i ended up writing a little story of 250 words and then i once that was done i did that during the master class uh, i expanded it out to just under a thousand and dreamforge magazine picked it up it was my first publication and so that came from that practice of trying to learn the craft and Moon, when he heard me read it, he was like, you need to sell that. That that one's going to go. And he was right. There you go. That's amazing. Just to, to, to see. And I've experienced this, so many writers just wanting to help each other and guide each mm -hmm. other and, and just expose the secrets of good storytelling. I, yep. I, I think it's amazing. And yeah, man. That's why I love going to conferences and meeting people like you and going to panels because it's just so fun mm -hmm. to hear people talk about these things and 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 success stories because it, it can be really disheartening when you don't have that perseverance yeah. when you've been doing this for and, a long time. And one of the things I love about the science fiction fantasy community is that pay it forward mentality. Uh, they people are always reaching back to say, "Hey." I've figured something out here. Let me help you as you're trying to figure it out as well. Um, and you know, writers of the future is that a thousandfold. They they are putting 
their money where their mouth is. They are paying thousands of dollars yep. per winner every year uh, for all the things that they do. Yeah. And uh, and yeah, it's just that pay it forward mentality that uh, permeates the whole community is fantastic. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I've, I cannot remember if I've actually met any rude or unkind people within the community. I've met people who are busy and they can't talk or whatever. But for the most part, I don't think I've ever met anybody who didn't want to help or didn't have right. didn't have at least something to give. And that's that is so cool. And I, yep. I think that's yeah, that's just fantastic. But one one of my final questions for you is in the past year, what are some pieces of media that have really inspired you and that you've had a really good time consuming, whether it's movies, TV shows, video games, books, whatever it may be? Okay. Um, so with my daughter, who is now 11, okay. we've been going through the Marvel Cinematic Universe, mm -hmm. watching in order uh, all the movies. And I'm this is the first time I've actually gone back and watched them in order because I'd watch them as they come out in the theater. And, you know, maybe I can't miss one, come back and catch it later. But as I'm watching it, and looking at the story, I'm amazed at how they set it up. Like they're dropping in hints two, three movies ahead of time that you go, oh, now that I know what's going to happen three movies down. Yeah. And so that ability to, to plan the world, uh, I'm just finding fascinating. Yeah. Along with, I write humor and I love the humor that's in it. Um, like we recently watched Guardians of the Galaxy, which is you know, slapstick humor at its finest. Uh, you've got all different types of comedy, but it's held together with a story. So even if all the jokes fall flat, the story itself itself is still good, yep. uh, which is one of the things I've learned that you have to have with comedy. If it rests on the joke, if the joke falls flat with the reader, they're not gonna like the story. Right. Uh, so yeah, I've really been enjoying that. Uh, as far as books go, I was thinking about this and I think my favorite book from the last year, it was actually two of them. I only have one of them here, but it's the middling affliction okay. by Alex Schwarzman. Um, he, this is the first book of his Conrad verse series. Uh, he is also the editor of unidentified funny objects, uh, anthology series. Okay. Uh, which uh, I was in number nine uh, with a short story that's a prequel to Death and the Taxman. Uh, okay. Uh, so anyway, The Middling Affliction, it is like Jim Butcher, where you got the, the wizard who's you know out there to protect his borough, uh, out to protect Bo uh, Brooklyn, and, and dealing with all of that. Yeah. But he's got his own spin and twist on it that is, you know, really fantastic. It's got the snarky voice, nice fast pace. Uh, so really an enjoyable comedy action read. Yeah. And so he just had a second book that came out this past fall called Cacistocracy, uh, which is uh, the meaning of that word is rule by the worst of us. Okay. I'm like, oh, that does kind of describe our politics right now but <laughs> we're not talking about politics yeah, yeah, yeah. um <laughs> but yeah it's uh i've been really enjoying that series and i'm very eagerly awaiting the third one in the series awesome well i love jim butcher he the dresden files is like it, yep. it's funny to say because it's literally our world but it's one of my favorite worlds to explore because it's just so it's just so interesting i love it so um awesome well david thank you so much for coming on i i really appreciate taking the time to get on here and talk about your process and and your philosophies and everything is there any last thoughts or things you'd like to say before we head off here uh well thank you so much for having me on colton really appreciate it uh had a fun time chatting i always like talking about books and writing and all that stuff uh, mm -hmm. so death and the tax man is coming out on tax day which is april 15th and it's available for pre-order everywhere yep. yeah uh it's funny 
check it out. I, I think just like I said, from chapter one, you guys will enjoy it. It's really awesome. But thank you so much, David. Everybody have a great day. Check out all of his stuff, all the Wolf Moon stuff. It'll be linked in the description below. Okay, see ya.